Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews Signature Series. From musicians to painters, from novelists to filmmakers, we're bringing you a diverse range of voices and perspectives, all united by their passion for their craft. And whether you're a longtime fan or a newcomer to their work, we're confident that you will find something to inspire and captivate you in each and every interview. So join us as we journey across borders and cultures, discovering new and exciting talents and celebrating the power of art and entertainment, which brings us together. Today, we welcome to the show country music star, Ash Taylor. Ash, welcome back. Thanks, man. Happy to be back. Thank you for having me. Uh, so it's been a long time. So for the people who are tuning into this new series, Ash and I go back to almost 2020, season two of the Cross Border Interviews, where we sat down and we talked about her career. But I want to kind of catch up since then, because I know, and I'm, I'm not I'm not going to spill the beans, because I'm pretty sure everyone knows you're a married woman now. So how's, life, how's married life been <laughs> since we last talked? <laughs> Oh man, you know, 2020 was just a couple years ago, uh, the last time we talked, but I feel like 20 years has gone by. Um, I love being married. Uh, the last time we talked, I was uh, dating my now husband. Um, we got uh, engaged though, actually uh, March 15th of 2020. So uh, what's crazy though, is we got engaged that day and two days later, the whole world shut down. For the pandemic so we're sorry i feel like we can maybe jinx some folks but um no we, we got married um in may of 21 and uh so crazy to think here in just a couple of months we'll be celebrating two years um been married for two years as a married woman but you know i love it i think there's just something really special when you get to you know marry your best friend um and we just are able just to do life together and we live a great life and um for those people that maybe don't know my husband uh chris is actually my band leader and lead guitar player so it's it's really interesting to just not only be best friends and to be married in a couple and just do life together but then also get to go and play music together and just to be you know get to do what you love together i mean there's no better thing so i feel very blessed honestly i i, I got a good one and uh now i guess i just got to keep them right <laughs> well i'm uh, the reason why i brought up the the, the husband because you and him <laughs> sat down and did a sort of a, a unique thing with your music and you, you stripped away and you made acoustic versions of your songs. Now, writing music in general is a unique experience, but then taking it and then stripping it away and releasing it as an acoustic version of the original song is probably right. a very, uh, emotional time because you you might think of your songs as children for you though and chris your husband and band leader and best friend and all around confidant how was that experience working together and putting out these songs that have just been released i honestly this is the most fun i've ever had on a project um and here's why you know when i think i'm very much a songwriter and a storyteller. You know, when I first moved to Nashville, I moved here not to be an artist. I, I just came here to write songs. And through a series of events, then people said, no, you're an artist. And I love being an artist. I, I don't want to change it for the world. But all three of these songs are all songs that I wrote. And when I write a song, it is nothing but me and an acoustic guitar. It, it just always is. So you have just a voice and an acoustic guitar and that is how that song is written and then usually what I do is after I've lived for a song for a while I take it to Chris my husband and I go okay put a really cool guitar riff on this right um chart it out let's you know uh, you, you know and we add layers to it and so um he writes all the guitar riffs and then I, I I you know have the song written and so it's like this team effort anyway and that's just how I would write any song so we were talking about it though and um I was like you know I feel like especially here in Nashville, which is cool. A lot of artists go in and we do these big full production, you know, I mean, just there's 20 tracks and, and it's awesome and it's fun. We have so many great talented players here, but I just really just would like to like let fans and people that listen to my music in to what that probably sounded like the day that I wrote it. So it's not perfect. It's not super polished. Um, you know, it's just Chris and I with, our guitars and I'm just singing you a song and I'm just telling you a story and it's super simple and it's super straightforward, but it's real and it's raw. And hopefully when you listen, you, you get the vibe and the feel that you are in the room with me the moment that I wrote it. 
and it's just something, you know, it's something fun. It's something different. I had never done that before. It forced me to get outside of my comfort zone. Um, it's also kind of nerve wracking because when it is just a vocal and an acoustic guitar, you hear every mistake, you know, there is nothing to hide behind. So it also forced me in so many ways to be a better musician even because there's nothing to hide. You know, you're just, you're putting it out there just for the world to hear. And it's, it's just almost like a beautiful, a beautiful thing. Um, but yeah, just never, I've never done it. I think it's definitely kind of weird and rare, but, um, I, I don't know. It was just so much fun. It was so special. And I'm, I'm actually super happy that we did it. It makes me want to go do more projects that way, um, or at least release more acoustic versions in the future, just so I can kind of share with, you know, listeners that experience. You Prior to this interview, you sent me the three songs and I had the pleasure to listen to them. And FYI, I've listened to them over and over again, and I can't tell oh. any mistakes. I'm not sure <laughs> what <laughs> mistakes you're talking about, but as someone who has listened to a lot of music, I'm going, what, what what mistakes did I miss something was there something out of tune or I just it's to me to me and, and I'm not I'm not blowing smoke here because honestly when I was listening to it it felt raw it felt like you were you were enjoying yourself but also at the same time it was a unique way of telling a story and the one song I want to talk about for a second is family because yes. I listened to it and I was like okay she, like this this could go two different ways because depending on the way that the the music and the riffs and the guitar is played, it could be a sad song. It can be a happy song, but the way you were able to project that song and I connect it with it, what does family mean to you? And when you were performing this, how much emotion did you put into that song? Because I can tell, and I could be up Creek because again, you said there was mistakes and I didn't hear any. What, yeah. what, what was going through your head when you were recording this acoustically with your husband? Um, you know, the night that I wrote that song, uh, I was fighting with one of my brothers. So I, I have four brothers. I have two older and two younger. So I'm the only girl and I'm right in the middle. And, uh, so clearly I had to grow up really tough because I got all these boys, you know, and, uh, my brothers just like, you know, anyone else that has siblings, I'm sure everyone can relate. My brothers drive me crazy. You know, those boys, uh, from the time we were kids, even now in adulthood, get on my nerve. And, um, so, you know, when, when I wrote that song though, that night I was sitting at my dining room table and I had just had a fight with one of my brothers and I just wanted him to know that, you know, just because we have the same last name does not mean we're always going to see it the same way, but we're still family. We're, we, this is just what we are. And that's, you know, it's cool. And so that's the moment and the emotion that I wrote that song. So when you're performing, um, especially when it's something you've written, I want people to feel what I felt the day I wrote that song. So I kind of just go into the vocal booth and it's really dark and I just focus on um, telling that story. And I, and I just go back and I just try to think of what was that like the night that I sat there at my dining room table and I wrote that song. Um, and so thank you for listening to those songs for starters. How much so did you want to call up your brother and say, yell at me again before I go record this? Because I can yeah. imagine there was a time you're going, Oh, did do I forget what I was actually feeling? Because when you're writing something, I can imagine there is a unique experience writing a song so emotional like that. Then when you go to re-record it, you go, okay, how do I capture what I've put down on paper here? Oh, it's completely a mind game. And and honestly, you know, we see a lot of actors and singers kind of go back and forth between the world of acting and, you know, being a singer or songwriter or whatever. And I think that's kind of why because you really do have to almost act a lot of the time when you're singing and you have, it's all a mental game of getting yourself back in that spot. Um, but yeah, luckily my brother, uh, that one in particular, luckily he still makes me angry enough, you know, so often that I, I kind of feel like we're just always there and that's fine. Uh, so I, I, I've played that show, uh, that show, sorry. I played that song out though at a lot of shows and I love the response that I get from it. And, you know, usually my music is very like, loud and fun and that's just my personality but uh for that song i feel like it's it, it, i mean it's just written straight out of the pages of my life you know and so it just makes me happy though when i hear people connect to it and that you got that emotion um because i think i think it's one thing to be a great singer um and to have great technique it's a completely different thing though to tell a story and to make your listener feel something 
And if I had to pick between the two, I, I definitely would rather be a better storyteller and make you feel something when you listen to my music rather than be a technically great vocalist. So what, um, why is that? I think- and I apologize for interrupt because I, I find that a fascinating yeah. statement you just said there, because most people would want the, I want to be the technical person. I want to be able to like mm-hmm. go up on stage and play and people connect that way. But you're saying, no, I want to connect through with my fans and through people who might listen. Yeah through the actual lyrics to the to the actual story behind the song why is that so important to you i think it maybe goes back to the point that i moved here to be a songwriter and so to me even as an artist the song is always key um always um it, song always takes first priority um when i sing i'm not trying to be whitney houston or mariah carey or any of those i think they're amazing at what they do and they're fantastic but I am not Mariah Carey or Whitney Houston. I'm Ash Taylor. And my whole job, I feel like, is to essentially go out and put on a great show and be a great artist. And it's to connect with you. It's to connect with every single person in that room. Um, I think if I were to hit, you know, um, a B flat or, you know, some crazy high note or whatever, you're like, oh, that's cool. She sings high. I, I don't think most people understand the technical of us. But when you leave a show, you're going to go, man, I connected with her, you know, I, I I got it and and we are connected. And that's what I think music is. And that's where I think it's, that's where the power of music comes from. Um, I also like, you know, even when I write songs, I write songs because I love music and I, I especially country music, you know, it has my heart. Um, it, it's just my life. It, but it's like, when I write a song, it doesn't do me any good unless you as a listener get it. And you and I are connected. So whether you're writing a song, performing a song, if you're in the studio trying to record, um, it's all about just the song and it's all about the emotion and it's all about, are people going to connect to this? And that, and that's really all I care about because if I don't have fans and if I don't have people connecting with my music or, you know, understanding who I am, well then I wouldn't have a fan base, would I? So then I, it doesn't matter how great I can sing or, or not, it, none of that matters because I don't have a connection with people. And so I think that uh, the songs are key and people are key always, always, <laughs> always takes the vote. Um, so that's just kind of my philosophy and that's kind of how I approach music. And that's why I think it was kind of cool though, to not go do this big production. And I mean, literally it, it was me and my husband and we're playing music with two guitars and I'm just singing a song I wrote and getting that emotion. And, um, the guy that engineered this for us is a guy named Pat Lassiter, um, who's a phenomenal engineer he's just incredible but I've known Pat since I moved to Nashville and we are really good friends and I would consider him like one of my best friends so I literally am in a room with my husband and my best friend and we're just making music and we're just having a good time and that you just can't put a price on that it's 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 amazing so I want to talk about the performance aspect of an acoustic version of a song compared to a band version of a song and I mean band I mean a backup band because sure. you, you go out and you perform uh, probably over the last few years as much as you possibly could uh, do, mm-hmm. do, during the COVID-19 pandemic. But going <laughs> out and performing with a band is one unique entity in itself. But going out and just performing with your husband with a guitar is going to be completely different. When you go to a, a, a bar or a location or a, a gallery that you're going to be performing at, do you know going in which one you're going to be choosing or do you just go, okay, I'm going to, f- I feel like an acoustic night tonight. So Chris, it's just you tonight. Or do you know going in or can people expect to hear an acoustic version of a song and then possibly a band version of another song in the same set? Um, Yeah. You know, it honestly just depends on where I'm playing. Um, you Usually if I do a full band show, I know well in advance that it's full band and it's kind of like something the, the venue or festival would want me to bring. Um, and full band, I love playing full band because that's energy. That's just pure fun. Um, also, I think sometimes it really takes pressure off of me, if that makes sense, to play with a band because um, everyone in that band, the drummer, bass player, guitars, they're all phenomenal musicians. You know, and they just kind of, I follow them. They set the pace. Um, if I make a mistake, they make, they say my butt, they make me look good. Um, when you have stuff that filled out too, there is just pure energy. So I, I love full band shows and I think they're awesome. Um, and we're really trying to do just more and more and more of those. Um, but especially over the past couple of years with the pandemic and just 
trying to keep crowds low and just all the so many difficulties we've all faced with that. Um, I've done most of my shows like all acoustic. And that's kind of what inspired Chris and I to do this is, you know, uh, like I said, I, you know, I write songs and, you know, play my guitar and I do my thing. And then Chris plays his lead parts. And it's like we were married. So clearly there's just this, I, I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, there's a vibe and a feel. And I think a off, just an authentic kind of vibe that just comes out with him and I. And we can read each other's minds. Um, he knows what I'm going to do probably before I do it. And so we're just, we're just able to work really well together. Um, and I think a lot of people, you know, if you go and listen to a lot of acoustic music, I've gotten the feedback from lots of people that they're basically shocked how much him and I alone can fill stuff out with just two guitars and a vocal. And um, I think a lot of that, though, is because we've played together so much and we do so many things together that it's almost like you hear people talk about sibling harmonies and how great they are. And it's like, well, this is not my sibling, but, um, you know, this is my best friend, my husband, and, you know, musically him and I work so well together. Um, we always have. So it, it just kind of makes sense. Um, and so I think that's one of the things I'm most proud of is, um, Chris and I can go play a show somewhere and we basically put on a rock concert, regardless if I have a whole band with me or whether it's just him and I, um, and so they're both special and I can't really choose between one, but, uh, do you, do you yeah, get, it, do you think the audience gets something different out of a band performance compared to an acoustic performance? Because sometimes the acoustic so. version would be more intimate, more one-on-one -on -one, where a band, it's a more, like you said, engaging ex extrovert uh, type yeah. of a performance. So for you, you, you try to connect either way, I'm assuming with your fans, mm -hmm. how important yeah. is it to have fans walk away and say whether it be a band performance or an acoustic I, I i'm happy i saw this because i'm i'm glad that i saw it this way and the acoustic version way oh i i hope i think that's kind of the goal every single time you know and yeah. then hope that they <laughs> come back yeah to the next show um because you know something something that i do is i actually do a live stream uh the first wednesday of every month ash and, wednesdays uh, right ash, ash wednesdays yeah <laughs> But it's literally me and usually Chris will join me. Uh, sometimes our dog Mel makes appearances. Um, but it's literally us just sitting up here with our guitars and I'm just talking to you and we're hanging out. And I play cover songs. I play originals. Sometimes I'll play you a song I just wrote. And it's this very intimate acoustic thing where it's just you and I and uh, whoever else decides to tune in. And we're just having a good time. Um, and so to me, one of the things I enjoyed, you know, going back to the pandemic, a lot of my favorite artists were going live from their living room and they were playing me songs. And, and I just thought that was the coolest thing as a fan. And so I would hope that my fans are able to, you know, whether they tune in or come see an acoustic show in person, no matter what it is, it's like, Oh man, she did this acoustic and it was really, really cool. And then they're able to come to a full band show and they're like, that was awesome. And, and you know, energy. Um, I think that that that's kind of the goal regardless is just to go back to connecting with people and just to have a good time and make sure they're having a good time. Um, I think one of the best concerts and a great example of this um, that I've ever seen is I saw Garth Brooks when he was here in Nashville, at the Bridgestone Arena, you know, huge massive arena. When I say that I sat in the very back of that arena, I mean, like, my back was to the wall. Like there's, you, you cannot go further back than where I was. But um, man, I remember sitting in that seat and as far back as I was, he, you know, he did of course full band and all that. I felt like I was right here with him. I mean, it's like we were just, his nose was touching mine. I mean, it was, you were right there with him. You were so connected to what he was doing. And then after the show, he came out with just him and his guitar and played acoustic. And I, I honestly kind of even loved that more because then it became more intimate and it was still energy, but just a different kind. And so um, I have a long way to go, but if I could be a female Garth Brooks one day, I would be okay with that. You know, I, I would hope that whether people see me full band or acoustic, they just connect with it and they connect with my brand and my story and my message and they go, I'm all for it. So um, that's, that's kind of the goal. Well, to my listeners and to my viewers, I highly recommend that you go check out Ash Taylor's website and uh, uh, all her platforms where you can get her music. But Ash, how can people get your music? Is there CDs that can be purchased? I, I, I'm not sure if vinyl is still the thing that people are yeah. doing, but can you get vinyl versions of your music? How can people get in touch and follow you? Sure, sure. Thanks for asking. Um, 
The easiest way to find anything out about me is just to go to my website, which is um, ashtaylor.com. And we have links on there to all my social media, uh, Spotify, Apple Music, uh, pretty much any streaming service. Um, I do not currently have, but I am going to have um, CDs. I don't know about vinyl yet. That could be an option, though. But for sure, CDs of my um, EP that I put out in 2019 titled Bakersfield. We'll have CDs of that. And then we're also talking about doing um, CDs for the acoustic sessions uh, and maybe putting those out as well. Um, so the, yeah, the acoustic versions in. are up on Spotify, though, right now and Apple they Music, correct? Be- yes, sir. That's correct. Um, Ash, I want to thank you so much. I want to thank you for sitting down, talking about yourself, talking about these great new songs, which are Cigarette, Family, and Play Like Ken. Highly recommend Play Like Ken if you like a little bit. And I'm going to say this. If you like a good story, play uh, Play Like Ken. If you like a good story about family, highly recommend Family. And if you just want a good song, Cigarette. And if you listen to any of these songs, I'm going to say this because I thought I had to listen to about six times before I believed that they were actually actually acoustic they are acoustic it's guitar and vocals and that's it but sometimes it does sound like you're playing with a larger band but i'm not sure if that's chris or if it's you but you guys sound amazing together and i thank you so much for sitting down and talking about your this latest project that you're working on well thank you so much thank you again for having me it's so good to see you again and talk to you and i just really appreciate you and all the support and love that you give me over the years i really do appreciate it Well, thank you, Ash. So with that, this has been the Cross Border Interview Signature Series. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember, everyone, just keep talking. Oh, actually, before I I should have done this beforehand, but, you know, this is my show, so I get to do what I want. Links to all (laughs) of Ash's information are in the show notes, so go check them out. Follow her on all the social media platforms. Go visit her website. Sign up for for her newsletter and just follow Ash's career because she is a rising star in the country music industry. And I think anyone in Canada would be highly appreciated to get her into one of their venues. So with that, this has been the Cross Border Border Interview Signature Series. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember, just keep talking.